Hey everyone, Carrie Millspaugh here, president of Abundant Living by KLM. I'm going to go over my top 20 additives and food ingredients to avoid, if that's all possible. I believe that the more knowledge you acquire, the better choices you can make, the better you can feed yourself and families, and the more powerful you feel about actually taking control of your health. Believe it or not, we can control 80 to 90% of our health, and it starts with education. So here is today's presentation is going to go over the top 20 additives that I believe you should avoid. Now keep in mind, there's hundreds of food additives and ingredients out there. You've heard the word preservative, um, and you don't think anything of it. You think of additive, oh, okay, artificial flavorings, colorings, things of that nature, and they, they seem real fluffy and non-threatening. Am I correct? So with saying that, I want to give you the truth behind what food additives really are because deep down, I'm as stubborn as they get and the only way I could actually avoid certain foods that I knew I loved and was somewhat addicted to chemically was to really find out what they were doing to my body or what was really in it and what could be the cause um, and factor behind, you know, basically is, there, is the benefit outweigh the risk of what I was eating. So I've done some detective work. Call me the food police. It's kind of been my nickname all along creatively take a notepad and pen and take down some notes, things that stand out to you. So you can feel more powerful when you go grocery shopping next time. So you can look for certain words that stand out to you as a big red flag. No, I shouldn't purchase this. No, I'm not going to feed this to my family. It's not okay. So let's dig deep with me. I ask you to join me and my little food police detective hunt finding of where to find certain ingredients that are actually very, very harmful to your health. So take those notes and feel powerful going to the next grocery store visit. I'm going to start first with partially hydrogenated oil. Now keep in mind, all of the topics that I'm discussing today, I get my food, or I actually get my most of my sources through three major things, books and doctors. I have two trusted doctors I love and adore and have followed their teachings for years. One is Dr. Mercola, that's M-E-R-C-O-L-A, and Dr. Russell Blaylock. That's B-L-A-Y-L-O-C-K. Dr. Russell Blaylock is a neurosurgeon. He um, does a lot of studies. I've read lots of his books. And I like to take it and make it real simplified for you. So you can learn these quick and fast without having to read an entire book or understand all those long words. So I like to simplify the complicated for those that are just trying to get through their day and, and live a more abundant life. Another book I use is by Ruth Winter. It's called a Consumer's Dictionary of Food Additives. It's over 500 pages. It's a very thick book. It's actually very intimidating. I don't recommend just anybody buy this off the top of the shelf and just and put it in their pantry or next to the cookbooks because it is pretty overwhelming. <clears throat> the key thing is, is to, it is nice to know what you're consuming. It does give you more power. Again, knowledge is power. So let's start with partially hydrogenated oil, otherwise known as trans fats. Many of you have heard this term before and are pretty comfortable with it. I want to take it deeper as to why it's bad for you. First and foremost, it's probably the biggest cause of heart disease. Hydrogenated oil actually scars your arteries, which is leaving these little divots in your arteries, which is causing the bad cholesterol to actually stick and clog up. So think of it as a drain. Your blood cells are the drain, and these trans fats are actually causing craters within those veins and little pockets to actually accumulate plaque and other things that are going to actually cause a heart attack. You don't want clogged arteries, correct? So trans fats are bad, and that's the main reason why. It causes a lot of inflammation. Secondly, where do we find these, this ingredient? Most commonly found in chips, crackers, breads, anything that obviously needs to be preserved. It's a solidified type of ingredient. If you've seen Crisco shortening, that's what trans fats looks like, that big white tub of lard, basically the same thing. Find it in fast food, peanut butter, um, unless it's natural peanut butter, donuts, of course, and all those other good, good, good things that you just love to eat that are not good for you. So trans fats, bad. Got it? Good. Forward. Number two, MSG, otherwise known as monosodium glutamate. This one's huge. In fact, it takes up two pages in my little dictionary of food additives book, shockingly. So, um, you know, if they tell pregnant mothers to stay away from MSG, hello, it's probably not good for you anyway, period, right? Can you imagine what it's doing to your unborn child? What is it doing to you? So MSG has been linked to an excitotoxin, which goes back to Dr. Russell Blaylock, one of my favorite neurosurgeons. He's got a great book out called The Excitotoxins That Taste the Kills. In that book, he explains how MSG actually excites your neurons in your brain to death, literally killing the neurons in your brain. So when you hear me say the term excitotoxin, 
That's what it's doing. It's exciting the neurons. Makes gives you a chemical reaction to your brain that, oh, this is good. Again, making it very addictive. So this is a highly addictive food additive. Okay, it's not just bad, it isn't just linked to obesity, eye damage, headaches, fatigue, depression, just to name a few. Some people have a serious allergic reaction to MSG, some do not. Uh, it could be in more of your foods than you realize. The key thing is awareness. We're going to live consciously and choose our foods wisely from now on. Where you can find this ingredient the most is in soups, Chinese food. Um, you see that little picture I have on the right there. It's kind of a joke because it does say MSG flavored. <laughs> Correct. I always cringe when I see someone eating ramen noodles or some type of soup because I know it's just loaded with MSG. It's in a lot of chips like Doritos, for example. And yes, I will name brand bash all throughout this presentation. I have no qualms about that. It's very important you know what you're eating. Fast foods, of course, don't care. I mean, fast food is, is at the bottom of every totem pole of food out there. You know you're eating trash. You know you're harming yourself every time you eat that. It's definitely in fast food. Moving right along. High fructose corn syrup. And, of course, I stopped with my I, – I actually started with my first – three top three hated ingredients ones that I just despise seeing in foods and drives me crazy the nutritionist in me goes bananas and wants to you know scream and yell and throw a temper tantrum when I see people eating this or buying it high fructose corn syrup is cheap it's liquid it's quick and easy to um, for food suppliers to throw it into an ingredient it doesn't solidify the ingredients so it's definitely found in sodas um, it's huge. Sodas is soda is bad for you. Period. If you can eliminate soda from your diet, you've done yourself a world of good. There's hundreds of reasons not to drink soda. I can't even go into all of those reasons yet, but you will see that that is a big determining factor throughout this presentation. Is soda is just a bad guy. Period. Leave it on the shelf. It's junk. Um, but high fructose corn syrup. What does that do? First and foremost, it shoots sugar right into your bloodstream without any fiber which some food, believe it or not, sugar is created. Natural raw sugar has fiber in it. Uh, stevia, another great uh, sugar replacement, has fiber in it, which helps slows down the blood sugar going into your blood. So it slows down the process instead of spiking your blood sugar, which is what this liquid high fructose corn syrup does. It's also a huge reason for obesity here in the United States. It links to diabetes. It's the number one source of calories in the United States. It raises your triglycerides. It raises the LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. It's just a bad guy overall. So stay away from high fructose corn syrup if at all possible. Red dye number 40 has been linked to everything you see that's red. 90%, 98% of the time, it's going to be red dye number 40. So take a look at the ingredients. Ignore the marketing on the front of your food item when you're at the grocery store. That's a marketing media ploy. Ignore it. It might say no trans fats. It might say no MSG or no added MSG. It's already got MSG in it, but we didn't add any extra. So be really careful with the play on words and the marketing that they'll use. So always look at the back of the box or bottle or whatever you're purchasing and look at the ingredients. That's where you are powerful. If you can read the ingredients, they make sense. There's ingredients you would have in your own kitchen, buy it. And the one sure way to eliminate this kind of uh, limitless feeling or overwhelm is, it says organic or natural on the outside of the box. Nine times out of 10, the ingredients are gonna be very clear, simple ingredients, not something created in a lab full of, full of laced chemicals that can harm you and give you cancer. So the key thing is, is to always look at the ingredient label. You'll see red dye number 40 is listed quite often. So this has been, of course, linked to ADHD, uh, which in my world, there's no such thing. I mean, hyperactivity, the doctor's got to slap something on, on a label and give you a diagnosis and then prescribe a drug for it. Yay. Okay. Problem solved. No. There's a actual triggers hyperactivity in some kids. Some kids are very sensitive to this dye and it actually creates some serious hyperactivity, which you think your child has ADHD, which in reality, you just need to eliminate red dye number 40 instead of pumping your child full of drugs they don't need. So it's a very sensitive allergy for some kids. Um, it's also known to accelerate tumor growth. So not just having a hyper kid, nobody wants kids jumping off the ceiling, but think about what you're doing to the little bodies and the blood cells as well, and you're accelerating some serious tumor growth. You'll see red dye number 40 in everything under the sun that's bright red. Marchino cherries, ketchup, jello, soda, candy, 
Again, I'll reiterate often, they're trying to sell you, make this food look pretty on the shelf. They want it to look appetizing. They're going to do whatever they need to, to make this food look, woo, take me home, put me in the cart, woohoo, take me home and eat me. So always be ahead of the game. One step ahead of the game, smarter than those food producers. Here's a great word you might have seen in the media a lot. It's azodicarbonamide, and this is known as that sneaky ingredient that the media just got a lot of WordPress on for Subway sandwiches, and they're taking it out of their Subway bread. Okay, Us food crazy people out there that like to blow the whistle on ingredients that don't belong in our food cause Subway, of course, to announce they're going to take it out. Of course, it's in lots of bread, guys, or just one repeat offender. You have to be smart and read the back ingredients of your bread. Don't just assume on the front that everything's all wonderful because it says whole wheat or whole grain. Be smart. Turn it around. Take a look at it. Look for those sneaky words. You can't forget a word like that. Good God, how many letters is that? Well, it's the same ingredient as what's in shoe leather. Yoga, yoga mats, literally. It's a uh, conditioner for bread. It helps make it look fluffy, prettier, whiter. It helps bread actually keep its shape. That sort of thing. Again, it goes back to the appearance of the bread so that you'll eat it and it looks better. Who cares if it kills you, you know? As long as it looks pretty and you buy it. So this type of ingredient actually can is linked to cancer and asthma it has been outlawed in certain countries, like Australia, for example. That's the one thing where I feel that the United States is lacking and going behind the eight ball. The FDA is not really our friend. They've proven it over and over again. They've proved many things that have caused cancer and killed people in the past. So be smart. You know, you really are responsible for yourself. Don't ever let the government be responsible for you. You're responsible for what you purchase, bring into your home, and, and, and cook for your family. So be smart, guys. Number six, genetically modified foods genetically modified organisms, GMOs, another thing that's getting some serious media coverage. I've known about this for ages. I don't know why the media is just not jumping on board, but Monsanto had a lot to do with that. So moving right along again, you see the picture on the screen, tomato getting injected. It's exactly what's happening. This is where man has taken what God has created in nature, has taken Mother Nature's beautiful tomatoes and made them into grape tomatoes, for example, by genetically modifying some of the organisms. Or, for example, we never had seedless grapes. That's a GMO. We've created it to grow away without the seeds. Another one would be cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes. Those are not natural. Those are genetically modified through man's laboratory techniques to make them that way. There's most of our foods are genetically modified. That's just the truth. Unless it's organic, it is has most likely GMOs. That's just the truth. Thing is, is I understand the mindset behind it. We want to feed the nation, feed the world. And we know that if we mass produce fruits and vegetables and other foods, we can feed more people, but we're feeding them poorer and poorer quality food. And on the downside, these injections are actually helping to create, of course, pesticides, which are helping the seeds not get eaten by bugs and pests, and then, of course, growing into plants that are less resistant to getting eaten by pests. But the bad news is, is these pests are actually turning into monster bugs. You know, everything gets stronger with each generation. Same with bacteria. We have to outsmart it because it gets more and more resistant to what we're putting out there. So we're actually making bugs larger, scarier, more scientific, sounds like a sci-fi movie of these giant bugs coming out and creeping us out in their gardens. Well, unfortunately, that's kind of true. So watch out for GMOs. Again, be aware what's going on on the media. You take this and you decide what goes in your body, how much do you eat of it. Now you're aware. Now you decide, is this important enough for me to eliminate this from our diets? So it's never proven to be safe over long-term consumption. I mean, it is another form of Agent Orange. These are things we've seen in wars. So um, it's been, of course, linked to obesity, heart disease, cancer, autism, depression, and all sorts of other foreign things. So be very, very careful with what you're putting in that precious body. Here's a word I'd love to pronounce for you, but I'm not sure I can even say it properly. And that's a big red flag all by itself. But I'm going to give it a shot. Dimophil polysiloxane. And if I'm close, 10 points for Carrie. This is found in Chicken McNuggets, and I'm going to rain all over McDonald's parade today, and I don't care. You know, McDonald's is not something that I allow in my household. 
Very, very rare does my daughter eat this. Happy Meals should be nicknamed to Cancer Meals. In fact, Dr. Mercola, one of my favorite doctors, which I mentioned before, calls it McFrankenstein Creations is really what their food is. If you were to dissect what's literally in there, it's not food. It's silly putty. That's exactly what this is. It is an anti-foaming agent. It's silicone and it's put in chicken McNuggets. And I think that's all I need to say on this slide all by itself. Take it from there. Another artificial uh, dye, which I love the word dye, it's spelled D-Y-E, but really it should be D-I-E because that's what it's doing for you. It's trying to make you dye. It's making the colors pretty. Oh, Gatorade yellow, it looks so pretty. Yellow five and number six. Yellow six has been linked to adrenal tumors in animals. Yellow five, of course, has been linked to hypersensitivity. Once again, hyperactive children, I wonder what's wrong with them. Well, look at the foods they're eating. Even our, their favorite Kraft mac and cheese has yellow dye number five in it. Candy, sports drinks. I'm an anti-sports drink person for two major reasons. Number one, the dyes. Number two, the sodium is really high in, in sports drinks. I'm not a big fan of sports drinks. I will never, ever, ever recommend them to any clients to drink them. Pure water. It's all you're allowed in your body. So that's another big yellow slash red flag for the dyes that are out there. Be smart. Artificial flavors. This one's my favorite to talk about because this is when it really clicks to on. Little, little uh, light bulb moment for you guys. Artificial flavor sounds so innocent on the back of an ingredient bar. In fact, it's pretty simple and artificial flavors and ingredients and colors. That's the end of my cereal. Think of fruity pebbles. <laughs> it's nothing fruit in fruity pebbles. There's a lot of dyes and a lot of artificial flavors and a lot of carbs. Why are we feeding our kids this? We wonder why they can't think at school. That's what they had for breakfast? They can't even focus on their first class. Their brain is going bananas. You're exciting the neurons in their brain and killing them. They're starting to get antsy because they just had a bunch of dye, literally starting to have hyperactivity. They can't sit in their seats and they can't concentrate. What about you going to work, eating that kind of crap before you go to work? You know, overall, it's kind of scary. No wonder we can't focus. No wonder we crash so quickly during the day. No wonder we are failing in a lot of areas of life and never feel like we have the energy to get to from A to B in our life and create the life we really love. That's not an abundant lifestyle, guys. So I'm going to give you a quick wake-up call on the next slide. All of those beautiful letters, words... God, it sounds like a bunch of lab ingredients. Are we in a chem lab somewhere? Where's the beaker at? That's kind of what I feel like when I look at that slide. This is the ingredients of a typical artificial flavor, strawberry flavor. Like the kind found in a Burger King strawberry milkshake. That's what those ingredients are. So you can see why the back of a label would say strawberry, artificial strawberry flavoring. That's three words. Who could fit all those words on the back of an ingredient label? I mean, you'd have to have like, a printout to go with each item you purchase. And that's just strawberry. That's not all of the other flavors in Fruity Pebbles. I have to pick on Fruity Pebbles because it's the top of my mind. So what does this do for you when you take a look at this slide? Little wake up call. Are you getting an idea of how much chemicals you're really putting in your body? I mean, it does stimulate your appetite, which is great. It makes me gain more weight. Um, it increases your carb cravings. Oh, fabulous. And it stimulates your fat storage and weight gain. Sweet! All those chemicals are triggering things inside your body. You wonder why you can't lose any weight. Not to mention, everything I ever show you on this presentation is always linked to cancer. Almost everything is linked to some form of cancer. So, we either, either it's weight gain or cancer. I mean, that's that's our reality, guys. And we wonder why we have such so much diagnosed cancer every year. How many people we're losing? Because it's what we're putting in our bodies. Aspartame. Another word that drives me crazy. This is found in all sugar-free products, diet food, sodas, candy, gum, and so on. The key thing is, is in this picture, you'll see that even ants avoid aspartame. In fact, it's a good pesticide if you have any laying around your house and you need to have an ant problem. Go ahead, whip out that uh, fake sugar packets, put it in the corners of your house, and you probably get rid of the ants altogether, which is awesome. But that's what you're putting in your body, too. Aspartame is also an excitotoxin. Just like Dr. Blaylock talks about in his book, big no-no, guys. This one's actually, again, it's exciting the neurons in your brain and it's causing them to die. 
terminate your neurons in your brain. You kind of need those. I'm just saying. So it makes me crazy is aspartame is consumed by two people, two masses the most, children and elderly people. Those are the two that should stay far, far away from aspartame because it actually breaks down their blood barriers in their brain cells and their brain walls. So you see the elderly person that's been diabetic their whole life. They're starting to get dementia. They're starting to get Alzheimer. It's because they've lived on aspartame for so long. And then they're losing their memory. Or what about that new child, that baby that you've been feeding the sugar-free garbage to is failing in kindergarten or can't get to first grade? Or why are they slower than, than having a learning disability? I don't understand what I did to my child. Why is this happening to me? What are you feeding them? Is that sugar-free jello that's full of aspartame and red dye number 40 really the best choice? Not so much. Do your research. Be powerful. Read your ingredients. Take complete ownership and be conscious about everything you put in your body. Saccharin's also the same type of family as aspartame. I just wanted to give you a slide to show you the green, I'm sorry, pink, hello, I'm not colorblind, pink slide to show you that sweet and low is saccharin. Saccharin was discovered by a scientist in 1879. He was actually working with coal tar derivatives on his hand and he accidentally licked it. I don't know why, whatever possessed him to do that. And he was like, holy crap, that's really sweet. What the heck was that? So again, let me slow this down. First discovered by a scientist in 1879 who had coal tar derivatives <clears throat> on his hands. So we're eating coal and tar. Interesting. Of course, during World War I and II, they were like, sweet, this is awesome. There's no calories. We can pump this stuff full of sugar. It's actually sugary, more taste, more sweeter than natural sugar. It's got this after metallic taste, you know, aftertaste. But anyway, people overlook that. Let's pump it full of sodas and call it diet soda. We're calorie free. We're going to get skinny. That diet, that, that diet soda called TAB, T-A-B. Everybody remembers that pink can in the 70s, 80s was the big deal. So by the 60s, it was linked to cancer. And you'll see less and less saccharin, of course, has been included since then. But be very smart. Be a wise person. Be a wise purchaser. And take a look at that. <clears throat> Carrageenan. It's a pretty little ingredient that helps thicken cream. Oh, OK, we're going to put it in pudding, milk, ice cream, Cool Whip, all those wonderful things. Um, but it's also been, of course, linked to digestive diseases and cancer. Um, a lot of people, and I think it's interesting to think they're lactose intolerant. They just might be intolerant to carrageenan. Do some testing. When I work with clients, I always start to take away things out of their diet for a few weeks and see what happens, if it corrects itself or not. So again, they're trying to make the cream look poofy and pretty. In the meantime, they're giving you ulcers and cancer in your intestinal tract. It's also a very, um, good for <laughs> if you want inflammation. It's also linked to Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, and other inflammatory. So be wise about these little extra additives. Again, they're trying to make the food pretty. Isn't it better just to make the stuff at home from scratch? You know what's in it, right? So be mindful of carrageenan. That's another powerful word to memorize. Caramel coloring. This one is the most common food dye coloring out there. It's used in everything from syrups uh, which I don't have listed there. It's in most of your syrups that you put on your pancakes. Guys, just buy organic maple syrup and save yourself the trouble because that syrup has high fructose corn syrup in it, a ton of sugar, caramel color, and a million other things that are not right for your body. Organic maple syrup, best best replacement strategy. As I would call it an up level. Um, caramel coloring, again, has been linked to cancer in mice. It's a very carcinogenic chemical. California is trying to eliminate the possibility of any more than 29 micrograms per serving. Um, I looked at some of the research in sodas, which is where you'll find the most of it. Colas, Dr. Pepper, uh, Pepsi, and yes, I'll name brand Brash. <laughs> name brand Brash. Yeah, that's easy to say. I don't care about name brands. and Those are the ones that people realize, you know, I recognize. My girlfriend died this past year at age 41. She never left the house without a giant Dr. Pepper. She lived on that. Guess what she died from? Stomach cancer. Do you think it's linked? There's a very, very, very good possibility. I know of other people that are, are addicted to sodas as well and literally don't even realize they're drinking probably a case or more a day. 
It's insane. So you're damaging your body in so many ways. This is just one of them. TBHQ is it preserves your food with petroleum. You know, sometimes I have to use words like petroleum because you wouldn't want to bake a cake with petroleum, right? You know, you wouldn't go out in the garage and grab some ingredients off the shelf there, would you? TBHQ, one to four grams, is known to cause nausea, delirium, cancer, DNA damage. It actually causes ringing in the ears, too. So anybody that's had an amount, a massive amount of this has had some ear issues, there's a very good chance it could be linked back to TBHQ. It also affects the estrogen levels in women. So be really careful about that. We don't we have enough issues with our hormones and aging and all that other stuff. We don't want to, you know, obviously exemplify it and make it worse. Where you'll find TBHQ nuggets again. See those chicken nuggets are just bad. They got a bad rap this time around. Fast food, of course, always the bottom of the totem pole of the food chain. Reese's, my favorite. I can't believe it's in there. I know I was shocked too. Chips, crackers, and varnish. Oh yes, varnish and lacquer again in your stuff you can find in your garage on the workshop. Number 15, sodium nitrate. This is in every deli meat, hot dog, bacon, pepperoni, everything you can think of, which kind of makes me wonder how Subway can get away with saying how great it is when they've got yoga mat in their bread and they've got nitrates in their lunch meat. I'm pretty sure they do, and don't quote me on that, but they've never claimed they don't. It's very hard to find certain foods without nitrates. Sodium nitrate has been linked to cancer, um, colon cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, pancreas, pancreatic cancer. It also is what turns meat into that bright red. It keeps its color better. Again, do they want you to purchase this off the shelf because it looks pretty. Would you purchase a bag, I'm sorry, not a bag, but a package of steaks that were not red but kind of grayish brown? Or a hamburger, you know, ground hamburger that's not bright red. No, you'll think, oh, something's wrong with it. It's going bad. No, that's what it looked like naturally before they added all the red dye and, and the sodium nitrate to it to try to make it look more prettier and so on. So that's what turns meats bright red. Sodium nitrate has been linked to leukemia. Uh, kids that eat 12 or more hot dogs a month they have a huge risk of uh, getting leukemia. Be very careful what you're feeding your children. Good news is there is nitrate-free food out there. I look for it. I found it successfully. Um, I would be very happy to share that with you. There is always an up level. You know, food may cost a little bit more when you purchase a better product, a more natural or organic version. But at the end of the day, you're going to pay for it one way or another. Either pay for it in prevention or pay for it trying to heal yourself. It costs a lot more to try to cure yourself and treat disease than it does to prevent it. So you're going to spend the money somewhere. Where should you spend it? Because the upside of buying better food is you have a more quality life and you're going to feel a whole lot better. I mean, who wants depression and, and irritable bowel syndrome? I mean, come on, that doesn't sound like a fun day. So, Alestra. It's not used as much as it was once upon a time in the early late 90s. It was kind of a big deal. It was one of those fat substitutes that they decided to chemically create. Because that was back in the day, and hopefully all of you have erased this myth in your mind by now. Well, Lester, fat does not make you fat. So the whole label fat-free stage, I hope, is gone. I think it's still out there. I see it here and there in the grocery stores. Fat, you need fat to digest food properly. I mean, there's a need for all sorts of fats. Trans fats, you don't need. I can tell you that right now. You can eliminate this from your diet. But omega-3 fatty acids, trans, um, saturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, those are good for you. So you got to be, you need a combination of fats. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit of fat in your diet. Olestra is going to make you, in fact, if you're going to eat these chips, they're found in fat-free Pringles, light Pringles, wow chips, wow Doritos. You might have seen those. Um, there is a warning label about what it will do. The side effects are that you will spend a lot of time in the bathroom. So you might as well eat that bag of chips while you're sitting on the toilet, seriously, because it's going to run through you so fast, you don't even know what happened to you which isn't good. A bad case of diarrhea means you're not retaining any vitamins or anything else in your diet. Nobody wants to have a fun day like that. So that's one of the biggest side effects is running to pop. Next one, potassium bromate. So why is this food so unhealthy for you? Potassium bromate actually triggers a lot of thyroid issues. And us women, we really need to work on 
staying away from anything that's going to give us thyroid challenges. We are already challenged enough with trying to keep our hormones regulated. Some of you are facing the change of life. Some of you have passed it. Let's not make our thyroid unhappy on top of it. And this is another, again, bread is the bad news key common denominator. In this presentation, bread has a lot in it. You're better off making homemade bread. In fact, my mom always did. Probably a good idea to keep doing that. So overall, um, looking at this is a dough conditioner. Again, makes the bread pretty, keeps it from collapsing, but it inhib inhibits um, a good healthy thyroid from functioning properly. So stay away from that. Number 18 is propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is, again, a defoaming additive in processed beet sugar and yeast, and it's used in antifreeze in breweries and dairy establishments. So propylene glycol, you actually find it in cake mixes, baked goods, toppings, beverages, cosmetics. In large doses in animals have been reported to cause central nervous system depression and kidney changes. I'm sure over a period of time, anything major, of course, is going to cause, you know, a lot of issues in your health. The key thing is, is to stay away from it. Again, power. Knowledge is power. So it's just a kind of a clear color is vicious liquid, but it's slightly bitter and tasting and they put it in foods to use as a confectionery. So you'll see it in lots of things. Even shredded coconut has it. So be mindful when you're looking at things, toppings, icings, things of that nature and going forward. Moving on to BHA and BHT. You'll see most of these are in the same ingredients. Um, well, look at their sugar-free Jello is another repeat offender. Shocking. Chips, beer, soup bases, even in your cosmetics. So, ladies, lipstick is actually something you you eat whether you want to or not. We do ingest a lot of lipstick throughout our lifetime, so be mindful that it's actually something that's not got harmful ingredients in it. Um, overall, though, uh, BHA and BHT is um, something that has been again completely banned in certain countries such as Japan. Uh, it can provoke an allergic reaction for some people. It is a potential cancer causing agent. Um, you know, it's overall you'll see cancer is of course the repeat offender here. It can be toxic to your kidneys. They did some um, studies on that. Out of the two, BHT probably is the worst of the two, but they're both basic preservatives and a stabilizer, the other stabilizers of course, um, in beverages and ice creams and candy and baked goods. Chewing gum even has it in it most of the time. Gelatin desserts, which is why I've got the jello in there. Um, it's also found in lard and shortening, which also has trans fats. So even more reason to eliminate some of these. You'll see that some of the foods that are repeat offenders have multiple ingredients of what I've discussed today, which is all the more reason to stay away from them. Last but not least, brominated oil, which is also known as BBOs. BBOs are, is a flame retardant. <laughs> in case you thought you were gonna uh, need to worry about starting on fire or not. It's a flame retardant, but we're also putting it in our foods. It's really that yellow kind of syrupy, sweet citrusy taste to Mountain Dew, mellow yellow, things of that nature, soda, sports drinks. You can find it in some breads. Overall, it's been banned again in Europe and all over Japan. It actually works against your reproductive organs, so it gives you some reproductive issues. It builds up tissues again, which results in tumors. We'd say about 10% of our sodas have this in it overall. So the key thing is, again, you're going to see a lot of commonality, obviously, throughout all 20 of these additives that I've given you today. The key thing is, is you know, you're going to, you, you could eliminate bread and soda from your diet all alone and knock out most of these. Um, anything preserved in the grocery store, there's a very good chance it's going to have something in it, unless it's from the natural organic food section. So again, we always turn around the box, turn around the ingredients, take a look at them. You'll get these words memorized and they'll stand out to you so quickly. You know, like the biggest red flag jumping off of the page or box or whatever, or the wrapper. You know, the key thing is you need to ask yourself, do the risk outweigh the benefits? I might be saving 30 cents on this box of cake mix, but if I buy this natural one over here, that's 30 or 40 cents more, 
really what matters. I mean, think about it. Your life, you've given one chance around. You've got to really realize at some point what's most important. And again, I go back to what I said in the beginning of this, this presentation. is I had to know what I was physically ingesting so that I knew not to pick up that, that chocolate piece of cake or um, when I found out my favorite stovetop stuffing had monosodium glutamate in it. I haven't purchased it since. I had to know it had MSG. And when I really realized what it was doing to my brain and how accumulating a diet with that in it could do harm over a period of time is when I stopped purchasing those things. So take it baby step by baby step. Don't be overwhelmed. You got to start somewhere. You might as well start today. I started somewhere 10 plus years ago, you know, and now it's a no brainer. I go to, I go grocery shopping unconscious because I've already eliminated as much as I need to to know what to buy, what not to buy, and what goes in the grocery court cart safely. And anything questionable, I know to read the ingredients, and I've already studied enough of these words to know what stands out as okay and what's not okay. Nothing feels worse than thinking, is this good for me? That's a very powerless feeling. Is this good for me? Am I feeding my family right? Am I feeding myself right? You know, why am I getting diagnosed with type 2 diabetes? I get very frustrated because on the back end, Trying to heal someone that's got fibromyalgia, Crohn's disease, leaky gut syndrome, candida. Oh, I get exhausted because it hurts so much to try to go backward and fix all that damage. It's like a car that's never been maintained. Then all of a sudden it just bottoms out. You know how hard it is to go back and fix all those mistakes? If you never changed its oil in five years, if you never put in the right fuel, if you never did a, a complete tune-up, or you know any kind of other maintenance to it it would be probably no good probably be on its way to the junkyard do you want your body to be on the way to the junkyard no you want it to take you right into your ripe old retiring years and that's the whole point of this presentation so take notes play this again if you need to ask me questions feel direct to reply to me or instantaneously contact me on kerrymillspaw.com you can also um, email me as well as you'll have contact information on there. Send me a quick note and I'll respond. If you have any questions in regards to this, more importantly, I just want to give you tools for you to be powerful and make better choices. If you don't know what you don't know at the end of the day. And it all boils down to getting out there and living consciously and watching everything you're eating and make a choice. You know, if you're only eating something once in a while, you get to make that choice. This is my moderation time. You know, I'm gonna, it's gonna be okay to have this, but I know there's a better choice out there and I'm gonna start buying that better choice. So I hope you've enjoyed this little eye opener test, little presentation, and as much as I enjoyed being the food police and little food detective helping you with those ingredients. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and go live consciously.